Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at some of the main timeline features and preferences as well as some simple motion clip editing. Let's start off by looking at some of the basic settings first. One of the most important features is the object related track button at the top. When this is enabled and you select an object in your scene, the related tracks will automatically show up in the timeline. This is a very useful option that allows you to keep a tidy timeline by only showing tracks relevant to the object you have selected at the time, whether it be a prop, light, character, etc. The next is the auto extend feature. If this is not enabled and you create a keyframe animation anywhere in the timeline, there will be no blending between the two keyframes by default. It will only jump to the next pose at that keyframe. However, if you enable this and do the same thing, it will generate a transition clip in the motion track. This can be edited in a variety of ways later. Let's look at some of the motion editing tools next. When you apply a motion via the content manager, it will play back automatically by default as the autoplay motion clip option is active in your preferences. This is useful if you are applying multiple motions that are meant to be applied consecutively as it automatically stops at the end of the previous clip, making it easier to apply the next clip in the correct place without manually changing frames in the timeline. Another timeline feature is called set start and end frame. This is a quick way to define your project length based on a number of selected frames. Notice that if I click and drag, even though the clips are all selected, it will set the project length a couple of frames short of the selected clips because that was the selected area in the transform track. To set it to the exact length of the clips, I need to multi-select them from the motion track and use the set start and end frame button again. Auto-align is a useful but often overlooked timeline option in the preferences. This is active by default and will result in a playhead moving to the last frame clicked on or dragged to when moving or editing clips or keyframes. When this option is off, the playhead will remain stationary regardless of what timeline elements are moved around or edited. This goes for both right and left clicks. Timeline clip snapping makes it easier to align clips perfectly together when clicking and dragging. You can hold shift to temporarily disable this as well. Loop is probably one of the most important features you'll use, as many motions like the applied walking clip are meant to be looped. With this enabled, you can click and drag on the edge of any clip to loop it as many times as you'd like. Again, keep in mind that this is only for motions that are meant to be looped like walking cycles. Speed is another main feature that you can use instead of loop. If speed is enabled instead of loop, then clicking and dragging on the edge of a clip will increase or decrease the speed of that motion clip. You can see the percentage increase or decrease in the clip name. Looped clips can be adjusted together using the speed feature. The resize clip is the last of these three clip editing features, each of which must be used exclusive from the others. With the resize clip feature, you can actually click and drag on a motion clip and it will cut off the motion at the point you choose. Try to avoid using this with looped clips as it will cut off the end of each successive clip, essentially ruining the loop. You can always use it as a way to clip off the ends of motions that you may not need. If you use this feature and resize the clip to longer than its original length, it will just maintain the pose at the last frame of the motion clip for as long as you specify. You will also often use the break feature, which will cut your motion clip at the position where the playhead is. This feature provides more flexibility with the blending and timing of pre-made motion clips as it allows you to change the position and blend time of smaller clip portions. If I align them all together successively, which is again easier with timeline clip snapping enabled, they will play back smoothly despite being separate entities. One thing to be aware of is that you cannot resize multiple separate clips simultaneously. If you want to group them into a single clip that can be edited together, you will need to multi-select all of them, then select flatten all motions with constraint under the animation menu. After that's done, then we can use the speed feature to adjust the length of the combined motion clips to our preference.
Let's move on to take a look at editing motions with keyframe edits. These are all done via the Edit Motion Layer tool. If you use the Set Key button, you will see it sets a keyframe for every body part under the Motion Layer track, which will act as the start of our edit. From there, I'll go to a future frame and do a simple edit by bringing my character's arm up. You can use the W hotkey to activate the Move gizmo. You can use the previous and next key buttons to jump from one keyframe to the next, or use the control left and right arrows on your keyboard. I can then go to a future frame and click the reset button to restore the motion to the original position values from the motion clip. If we play back, you can see that the edit is way too fast. If I click and drag on the main keyframe in the motion layer track, all of the keyframes in the subtracks will move simultaneously. When doing an edit to a single body part, you may want to avoid setting a keyframe for the other body parts that aren't affected. To do this, click on Body Part Mode in the Edit Motion Layer tool. If I do that, it will only set a key for the selected bone if I use Set Key. And if I move that bone, then it will only set a key for that specific body part. Reset will do the same as well. Let's add an additional layer to our character's fingers. You can also choose your target layer from the timeline, in this case our fingers, and then select Set Key via the icon on the timeline. From there, we can follow a similar procedure as we did with the arm, this time making slight adjustments to the hand gesture. Finally, you can use the Auto Focus Track when Edit Motion Layer to focus your timeline on the specific track for each body part you select in the Edit Motion Layer tool. This sometimes makes it easier to get to the track that you want, but then again it can also open up numerous unwanted tracks, so the preference is up to you. That's about it for this video introducing some of the main features of the timeline and basic motion clip editing. Please be sure to explore our other timeline tutorials on the Reillusion Courses page for more in-depth information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.